one more thing. That's how we got introduced to the Apple Vision Pro, the first ultra-high-end mixed reality headset from Apple, the best headset they could make, packed with tons of incredible features and over-the-top hardware to take the VR, AR segment by storm. Hey, Tai here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel because I saw a lot of confusion about it, like it always happens with the Apple products. Let's discover the Vision Pro together in this video, in all the details, from the perspective of a person who had the opportunity to use pretty much every headset out there till now. And love it or hate it, I'm gonna say it, this is truly something. Also it's price, but what is this for? Well, let's get into it. Let's start with availability and price. The Apple Vision Pro will be available early next year, just in the US, starting at $3,499 before taxes. Ouch! And later next year on other selected countries. Of course, we will learn more about it in the coming months, but availability seems to be a bit narrow this time. Also, yes, this is starting at, so that means that we're gonna have different storage options and accessories to get on top of it to make it a bit more expensive, of course. But let's talk about it. What is this thing? Apple wanted to call it spatial computing. The reality is that this is a true and true standalone virtual reality headset with mixed reality capabilities, very similar to what we saw last year here with the MetaQuest Pro. You can't in fact see through this headset directly. It's not transparent as it looks, but you'll see the external works thanks and through the big arrays of cameras in front with a technology called pass-through and switch between augmented reality and virtual reality thanks to the digital crown. A dial that creates a seamless transition between the two. The side world will see your face thanks to a curved OLED display on the front of the headset that will project an avatar on it, or as Apple likes to call it, persona, created with a scan on your face always thanks to the cameras on the headset itself. And thanks to the sensor inside, like eye tracking and down cameras for the face tracking, will show the avatar, sorry, persona, react and move like your real face. Now, this is really neat. It's something that even Meta tried in the past with some prototypes, but then didn't follow through. But here, it's brought to the next level. We will get back to this, but just to make sure this is not an AR headset, but it's damn close. So the idea of this spatial computing thingy is to extend the possibility of viewing and enjoying content and being productive over the limits of reality, where you can use your apps from the App Store and place them everywhere you want, create a huge screen everywhere you want in your room, and watch movies with it, or simply make your MacBook work in your environment. Of course, this is gonna be connected to the big Apple ecosystem. To achieve this, Apple crammed tons of sensors in a usual Apple form factor. The design is what they do best. And yet, here is where you notice all their compromises. The headset is made of a single sheet of glass on the front, a single piece of aluminum for the housing, and soft knitted fabrics for the strap and the face cushion. So, as always, very premium materials all around. The particular thing here, you're gonna get a scan of your face to actually get it tailored face cushion when you order it, and that's why it's also removable. Say all you want, but this is the most Ready Player One thing we saw till now. Really resembling a ski mask. Personally, I think it's very spot on and very good looking, even if a bit bigger than what I thought. Because this is not small though, and it's not light as well, from people getting hands on and telling us. On the side, you will also see their audio solution with personalized ray traced special audio. These are big drivers, and you can even scan your face to tailor the sound to your head and ears geometry to have accurate spatial audio. Also, the headset will scan and map your room to again tailor the sound to convince you that the sound is coming from the environment around you and not just from the speakers. Back to the comfort, it was marketed as a super comfortable, but it might still be front heavy for all the hardware packed in the front and the choice of materials on the front side. And as a confirmation and to help with it, well, there are some compromises here. Like the fact that you might want to wear a top strap that appeared in the trailer as well to support it on your head for long sessions. And the fact that you were still tethered to a cable with a proprietary attachment with a battery hanging from it for a short two hours battery life. But it seems like you're gonna have the possibility to connect this power bank to another power bank to additional power or to a wall charger uh, if you need an infinite use that is possible in this way. So yeah, 
there's still a cable. Where they didn't get compromises though, it's everything else, starting with the visuals. Here is where the magic happens. The Vision Pro uses two biggest postage stamp micro OLED displays with a total of 23 million pixels. That is insane. Just to put it in perspective, the Quest 2 has around 7 million pixels. It's three times less. This means that it will be impossible to see any line in between the pixels, being a pixel just 7.5 microns wide. Everything with a resolution of around 3400 by 3400 each eye. It supports wide color gamut and, of course, HDR, and being an OLED, expect amazing colors and, of course, very deep blacks. The screens will be paired with a pair of uh, custom made three stacks pancake lenses for edge to edge clarity with a rumored FOV of around 110 120 degrees. They didn't talk about this during the keynote, probably to don't confuse many people, but the IPD adjustment is actually automatic. There's a motor that is going to move the lenses left and right with a user sweet spot to actually assure the best clarity possible we're looking at it. This will reduce eye strain and make it much more usable for productivity and of course entertainment. That is the big focus here. On top of that, in the front we have another OLED display facing outward, as we said. There will be a curved display, probably the same used in the iPhones. And while when you are in AR it will show your persona, when in VR it will change to show a cool graphic. To be honest, I'm not really into this, I'd rather take off my headset when someone arrives out of respect and it seems like a little waste of battery and uh, something that creates even more heat on this headset. But hey, it will be pretty cool if we could get some uh, custom avatars and looks in the front. Do you like this idea of the outdoor screen? By the way, this crazy amount of screen resolution needs some real powerful juice to work. So, of course, let's talk about the processors. The Vision Pro will have a dual chip design to power everything up. This will be the most powerful standalone on the market by a large margin thanks to the M2 chipset, the same Apple is using in their Macs. This is tuned to maintain a comfortable temperature and run virtually silent and will cool down thanks to the openings at the bottom. They didn't talk about any fan, but I'm pretty sure there's one there. Remember that everything you see here will not be possible without the Apple Silicon and their journey to get to it. All these sensors and high resolution support, this takes from everything they learned from their iPhone, iPad, iWatch, Max and mix it in a single device, powerful enough to power their vision. And now that I think about it, the name uh, is pretty fitting. It seems like it was their vision all along. This is not the only chipset though. The M2 works in conjunction with the newly created and announced R1, a new HPU specifically dedicated to process input from all the sensors packed on this to keep the latency a minimum. And let me tell you, this thing has a lot of sensors. The Vision Pro uses 12 cameras, 4 depth sensor, 1 lighter sensor and 6 microphones to work, where everything works in conjunction to give you hand, face, eye and space tracking and give you the best high resolution pass through possible, with which you're going to be able to read text on your phone, on your watch, without any problem for the first time in VR, everything with a real stereoscopical view. Let's go piece by piece. The LiDAR sensor is used to perform real-time 3D mapping of your environment in conjunction with the other front cameras, so the headset will have a detailed understanding of your room, for example to have the possibility to have holograms casting shadows around. The two downward facing cameras track your face to animate your persona, while the internal cameras with the IR illuminators track your eyes, again to animate your persona and at the same time to authenticate the headset with their new optic ID, the equivalent of your face ID for your eyes. And also for the foveado rendering, well the headset will render full resolution where you're looking at and a lower resolution all around, making it possible for a standalone headset to render this ultra high resolutions. So these plethora of sensors will make this thing works, but how do you use it? This thing has two buttons on it. A button to take 3D photos and video, while interesting in concept, just don't beat that guy please. And the second one is the digital crown. Click on the digital crown to call the menu, rotate it to change between AR and VR, with a view that will expand from the center and you will be able to interact with that thing thanks to the eye tracking and the hand tracking. You don't actually need to point and click like you're doing with the Quest Pro. In here you actually just look at something and the software will recognize that and when you just click like this, pinching, 
you're gonna select what you're looking at. The level of accuracy here is very, very high, just considering that the pinching is not really what make you click, but you already know what you're gonna click because they actually see from your eyes the intention to click on something. And that is nuts. So yeah, there are no controllers here. Everything you need are your hands and your eyes. Very good for ease to use, a bit less for AR VR gaming as we know it. And yes, you can use an Xbox or DualSense controller, but just to play it flat 2D games on it. By the way, the Vision Pro runs on a new operating system from Apple called Vision OS, with for sure a similar design if you are into iOS. This will give you the possibility to use your iOS 2D apps on it, your Apple Arcade 2D apps on it, all in virtual screens that you can place around the room or interact with holograms, even if they were kind of scared to actually feature holograms during the keynote, like if they were trying to avoid to be compared with Meta in any perceivable way. It was just weird. Of course, Vision OS will have perfect integration with the Apple native apps like Messages, Safari, Photo, and FaceTime, where you actually use your avatar, where talking to people, where those people will float in little windows around the room. A big focus here, though, for sure, was entertainment to be able to watch movies at high resolution in a big screen everywhere you are, like even on the plane. And I'm glad they showed this, so hopefully people will stop looking at me weird when I wear my VR headsets on the plane. In fact, entertainment is such a big focus that they chose to feature the big collaboration directly with Disney. To watch movies in famous landscapes, watch sport right from the stand with a view of the stats and the field in front of you, or having Mickey Mouse stroll on your sofa. Of course, integrating everything with Disney+. Plus. While right now it doesn't feel there's much to do, but it's just like a glorified iPad stuck to your face, remember that we are at version one and things will grow quickly. From a VR hardware perspective, guys, this thing is just incredible. It packs everything a VR enthusiast will dream of. And I kind of can't understand why people might want to get it even at this price. Of course, though, this is not something you should buy right now. Not yet. This is kind of a dev kit. And unless you want to spend around 4K to just watch movies on a big screen and, uh, well, not having enough battery to get through the movie that you want to watch, most likely, well, the use scenarios are kind of limited. The time you're going to arrive to a version 2, a version 3, that are going to be cheaper, I hope, and with more apps to use with, well, that would be hard to resist. Because this is a new iPhone moment for Apple. It's kind of the best headset they could make, but nothing to use it just yet. As you might remember, the iPhone came out without any app stores, no apps, barely had the browser, and uh, well, that's about it. And it was very expensive. Devs, though, worked on it, and they made it what it is today. That's why it's not launching today. This is why it was presented at the crowd of developers ready to get their hands on it and start to build on it to create a new complete ecosystem. Spatial ecosystem. The kind of ecosystem Meta will love to have. What about you though? Are you planning to give away your kidney to get one? But here you have it guys. On a personal note, I think this is a great thing for VR and AR in general, giving some competition to something that was owned completely by Meta till now. On the other side, I'm a bit worried about the fact that we might start to see a lot of overpriced headset arriving because justified by the price of the Apple headset. Having something functional and very, very good already of around $500, what is going to be the Quest 3 is something we can't sleep on. But yeah, the race to the cheapest VR headset didn't work as intended, apparently. Uh, so yeah, that's on us a bit. Now let's enjoy the price hikes. But again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about it in the comment below. And as always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like it, please like. Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you love the channel, the join button on there. Little no further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons who join the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. 